Welcome back everyone. <laughs> I thought that was really cool to get the airplane to come over the uh, motorcycle and uh, we're standing out here at Raleigh Durham International Airport at the end of the runway just outside the fence and uh, anyway I just thought I'd make a quick video on the 5,000 mile ownership of the beautiful RSV4. Excuse the uh, wind I keep my helmet on so that maybe it'll cut down on the wind. It's really windy today. You probably saw the aircraft coming in almost sideways a little bit uh, because the wind is blowing a little bit off the center of the runway. So it was pretty cool to see it and kind of come sideways. And by the way, that was, I think, an American Airlines. But anyway, back to the bike. 5,000 mile ownership review. It's actually got 53 and some change on it. But it's been so cold and I've been so busy. I haven't made any videos. In fact, I got a couple comments on previous videos of, hey, what happened to you? I haven't seen any videos. Uh, life. <laughs> Busy. The night, few nice days we get. I happen to be working that day. And then, or something comes up. I just haven't had much time. And when I did, I didn't want to do much but just go around the block just to keep uh, everything moving and keep the bike running. But, um. It's going to be a short video and then I'm just at the end, I'm going to do just a quick uh, testing of the uh, tires on the side of the tire down here at my favorite personal racetrack, uh, which by the way is a closed road in Mexico. So we're going to do it there. So stay tuned for the end. Also, uh, I have a surprise video coming up in a couple months, uh, as soon as the weather warms up. Uh, so if you want to see something really cool with this and probably crazy, uh, and you guys will call me crazy after you see it, um, but it'll it will be on the RSV4, and uh, probably May. Uh, the video will be coming out so about three months or so. Uh, anyway, stay tuned for that, and I hope you get to watch it because it'll be really cool. Uh, 5,500 miles, just over two years ownership now. I got it uh, January two years ago, so just over two years. Uh, just to sum it up in a nutshell, nothing's gone wrong, absolutely nothing. I actually made a video on changing the tires. Uh, I haven't put it out yet. I made it a couple months ago. I just have not had the time to put it out. So I'm going to probably do that maybe this weekend if I can. Also, uh, I addressed the issue of the squeaking brakes. And you see that on a lot of motorcycles. When you got them brand new, they squeak. I'm going to show you how to fix that in the video. Uh, if I get a chance, uh, if everything goes well, I'll try to put it out here pretty soon. But I'll show you how to fix the squeak. It's pretty easy. You can do it yourself. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you specifically on the RSV4 because it, it too had the same problem. Uh, but it's a very easy fix. Um, the only issue I had was this uh, squeaking brakes. Other than that, uh, personal gripes about the bike. Uh, the only personal gripes I have is that this thing gets stupid hot. I mean, I mean stupid. Uh, especially in the summertime. This thing will go up to 230 degrees, 235 degrees, and the warning light actually came on one time. Uh, friends of mine and I rode up to Washington, D.C., and we wanted to get a couple pictures with the monuments and whatnot. And right there in the heart of downtown D.C., the warning light came on, the, the red air light, the caution, you know, severe warning, whatever it is. And I had to shut the bike off for a few minutes just to let it cool off. It was at 241 or 242 degrees absolutely ridiculous stupid hot uh, when the fans come on it blows up uh, right here right onto your right hand and then of course uh, I think I mentioned this in a previous video but uh, right here is the exhaust and your left foot sits right here right here there's like tremendous heat that comes up and pretty much cooks your calf and your ankle and by the way on the foot peg here on the left side these little black marks that's melted rubber from the bottom of my shoe from this exhaust it's not on the other side, it's only on this side, but that's how hot it gets. It actually melted the rubber on the bottom of my shoe. It's stupid hot. In the summertime, uh, make sure, uh, some. I know some people ride with like shorts and uh, short sleeves and all that stuff. Uh, you won't do it on this one because it will literally cook your ankle. Uh, it does. And one time I just rode it up to the mailbox because my mailbox is like a block away. It's stupid in my neighborhood, that's the way it is. And I rode the bike up there. And all I had on was uh, shorts and running shoes and just riding down the street, it was literally cooking my ankle. So it's that hot. That's my biggest gripe. The other one is the fuel gauge. Now, I guess on the newer uh, Tuonos, 
they actually have a fuel gauge but as far as i know the rs34 still does not have a fuel gauge i do not understand why this is uh some people say because it's a race bike but other race bikes have fuel gauges so i don't know why this one can't uh in fact my fuel light's on right now so we're gonna go up here in a minute and get gas but other than that i have not had any issues with the bike it's flawless i have heard some people say that they develop a coolant leak in, in fact one of my friends has a Toronto. Uh, same 2020 Tuono and he had a coolant leak and uh, he had to take it back to the dealership and I guess there's some sort of a, a seal or an o-ring or something that uh, busted loose and uh, he started leaking coolant everywhere check this out Delta coming in for a landing pretty sweet see how it cocks sideways a little bit because the wind's actually coming from this direction so he's actually kind of compensating for it that's pretty cool anyway and by the way i'm also an airplane geek i love airplanes and flying so anyway back to the bike uh no issues with it whatsoever the one thing i must say is uh if you watch the end of this video uh you'll see the bike go into i'll do a couple turns i have this favorite ramp uh just not far from here uh, that I like to put the bike on the side and have a little fun with it. But the one thing I must say about the suspension, I always said uh, you don't need electronic suspension. It's it's cool and it's, it's fun and it's, you can brag about it. And yeah, you pay, you know, $7,000 more for the bike uh, just so you can say it's cool. But I always said on the city street, you don't need it because most of the time you just set the suspension to one setting and you leave it there. You don't adjust it every time you go out riding your bike, right? Unless you're on a racetrack or a professional racer or a professional, professional track day junkie and you're always going to different track days, yes, it's easier to set it with that. Once you dial it in, you, you, you know, you, you write your numbers down, whatever, whatever settings you had. And next time you go back to that racetrack, you can set it back and it's real easy because you just push button instead of having to get your tools out and adjust it that way. I always said you don't need it, but let me tell you something. When I got this bike, uh, there's uh, three different modes for the adaptive or active uh, suspension, and then there's three uh, modes for the manual, where you can just manually dial it in. The active always constantly changes the, the damping and the compression and all that stuff. And I always said, well, that's a bunch of BS. You don't need that on the street, city street. Let me tell you something. Get it. It's a life changer. Once, when I got the bike, I put it in manual mode and I just left it there. For, for the first year, year and a half, I never got, took it out of it. Then this past summer, I put it in active mode. And let me tell you something, this bike behaves completely different if you put it in active mode. Now this, in the active and the manual, it has uh, a racetrack, uh, slick, uh, racetrack, street tires, and then road. I think that's what it is. I put it in the road in the active mode because the A1, which is the racetrack slick, if you have on the racetrack and you're using slicks, I guess that's what it's in intended for. It's really, really firm and rigid. And you can feel just about every crevice in the road, which is probably fine for the racetrack, but on the city street where there's potholes and all kinds of crap, you don't want to feel that. So I put it in A3 and it's the active road mode. Well, let me tell you something. It completely changes the behavior of this bike and it's so confidence inspiring you can hit a bump and if you watch the end of this video i'll uh, show you where the bump is and it just it glides over it it does not upset the stability of the bike it, it it feels like it's on rails and just glued to the pavement and it will not upset the bike i love it now if there if i get a bike and it has optional electronic suspension if i can afford it i'm gonna get it because it is a life changer um also the super courses uh, so this bike came with Super Corsas, uh, the Dunlop or uh, Pirelli Super Corsa tires. They were great. Uh, people always said, that, some people said it lasted me, you know, 1,000, 1,200 miles. Some people said I got, you know, 22, 2,300 or 2,500. This bike got 4,500 miles, I think is when I changed it. I'll have to go back and, and look at my notes to see exactly when. But I think it had 4,500 miles and it wasn't even bald yet. So the Super Corsas actually did really, really well. Now, the ones that are on here now are the Pirelli Diablo Rosso Corsa 2s. And from what I understand, they replaced them with the, the Corsa 4 or something like that. Anyway, these tires are great. I've had two or three sets on my XSR 900. I just put them on this bike. I love these tires. They're 
phenomenal. Uh, I have never had this tire skip, jump, do anything crazy. It's an amazing tire. The super courses were actually worse because until it warmed up, uh, if you got a little saucy on the bike, it would uh, it would check you. Uh, this one, I mean, you can jump on it and take off, and you're good to go. I love these tires. Other than that, I have never I've had no issues with the bike. It's it behaves wonderfully, except for the the heat and the fuel gauge, and the fact that it's ridiculously uncomfortable. And the seat back here, I accidentally scratched this sticker, which pisses me off because it's right in the middle of the word, word Aprilia. But anyway, the seat is really small. And uh, Mrs. RSV4 doesn't like to ride on it because one, it's uncomfortable, and she says it's scary, um, it's intimidating, and yeah, because you know this thing, the V4 engine, this thing spits, gurgles, rumbles, makes funny noises, and um, when that flapper valve opens at 5,500 RPM, the sound changes and the power of this thing, it's scary. She doesn't like to ride it, but she will once in a while. Uh, but I gotta get her to get the nerve up and uh, get on it. But, Outside of that, this bike is, is beautiful, it's awesome, uh, works like a charm, and uh, I hopefully one day soon I can put it on the racetrack because I would really love to see what this thing will do on the track day. Uh, just right now, things aren't going the way I want it to, so I can't afford to go buy a race suit and gloves and boots, but hopefully, maybe by next year, I was hoping to do it this year, but it's just, I don't think it's going to work out, so uh, maybe next year. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please help me out. I'm almost up to 1,000. I'd like to see that 1,000 uh, subscriber no uh, number come up. So if you don't mind, help me out. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Um, and if you want to see more videos, especially that one coming out in May, um, you won't believe what I'm going to do with this thing. <laughs> you're going to call me crazy, and you're going to say that's insane. Uh, so if you want to see it, uh, stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the channel and um, hit that bell so you get notified when that video comes out. And uh, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get some gas because uh, my fuel light's on. And then I'm going to put it up on the um, on the ramp here and I'll let you uh, just check it out real quick. Hopefully there's not much traffic there. It's the middle of the day. It never seems to work out for me, but we'll see. Anyway, catch you in a minute. All right, so we're back. We've got some gas. And I promised everyone that I would... Uh, take this bike up here uh, to this ramp and have a little fun on it and uh, we're not gonna make it long because the rain is right up on top of me and I'm still a good 10 miles from home so we're gonna try to make this uh, quick but I thought about just not doing it at all but since in the beginning of the video I already said I would I'm gonna try to do it once and hopefully there's not a lot of traffic but uh, from the airport to here the traffic's been pretty bad so uh, every slow uh, idiot in front of me and finally I made it down here to my favorite uh, ramp it's like a four leaf clover if you're looking at it from above and uh, I like to have a little fun on it so we're gonna try to do that and uh, see what this bike will do and hopefully not get wet on the way home that's the goal anyway so we'll see how it works this is a pretty fun ramp too right here of course I get a guy in a Buick yeah this is what I was afraid of this this crap These uh, these tires, these Pirelli uh, Diablo Rosso Corsa 2s, they are amazing. Right up here at the top of this ramp, right here, is a nice bump. And with the electronic suspension, this thing handles great. There's also one right here. Real nice and smooth. No issues.
Oh, is it possible that I get all four ramps to myself without any idiot in front of me? Well, almost. We got this van. Hopefully, he'll get out of the way. And I got all four of them to myself. Wow. Especially in the middle of the day. I did not expect this. Now, right here, there's a good bump. And it soaks it right up. That's why I love this electronic suspension. I don't think I'll ever go back to regular suspension. It's like having power windows, you know? You'll never go back to the crank window. <laughs> crazy but this is what I like to do we don't have any twisty roads around here so if you want twisties this is the best you got there's not much else you can do and I think we're done now I'll just take it to the house but uh, I did forget to mention uh, two things on the uh, beginning of video about uh, what I think of the bike over owning it 5,000 miles or something, 5360 right now, is uh, one of the other things is this fuel cap. You know, normally when you open up the fuel cap, uh, it opens just like every other fuel cap. But the hole, the nozzle for it is like just barely bigger than the nozzle of the gas pump. You know, most motorcycles, the hole is like maybe twice as big. Not this one. <laughs> this one, it is small. And when you're pumping gas, you can't see down in the hole to see how far the uh, gas is, you know, the fuel level. So when, you, uh, when you're putting gas in it, you know, it'll overflow if you're not careful. And you don't want to do that. So it's just a kind of a pain in the ass that they made the, uh, the filling nozzle so, so small. So I don't really care for that. I wish it was different. Now, I could switch it out, but... If you remember or saw in my previous videos with my XSR 900, I had a Rizoma uh, fuel cap on there, which had the same problem. And now that Vortex one, I think it's Vortex, they make one and it's like a quick release or something. I'd have to look at it to see if that one is the same way. If anyone owns one of those, can you tell me if the nozzle, uh, the filling hole is uh, just barely bigger than the fuel pump nozzle? on those because I don't know. I've never seen one. I don't know anyone that has one. So that uh, is kind of um, a pain in the ass. I don't like that. The other thing I don't like is that Aprilia put a, a million and one of these warning stickers on there and people have asked me why haven't you taken them off. Well I'll tell you why. Because they are a royal pain in the ass. I don't know what kind of glue the Italians use on this thing but normally like even on the Yamaha, my XSR, you just take a uh, hair dryer and heat the uh, sticker just a little bit and then grab it with your fingernail, it peels right off and then you can, if there's any glue, you can just clean it off. This one breaks up and uh, I don't know, well you can't really see it now, but I tried to take it off on this one in the corner and it just, as you're peeling it off, it just, first of all, it's stuck on there like, I don't know, like a 10 times super glue or I don't know what the hell they use, what kind of glue, but it is wickedly strong. It's never coming off and the sticker breaks up so it's not like a normal vinyl sticker it just breaks up into little chunks so I managed to get one off with a hair dryer but it was a real pain in the ass and you had to like sit there and heat it and heat it and I don't want to heat the especially this carbon fiber I don't want to heat it too hot but it's it's a real pain in the ass the sticker was right here on this side to get it off but it is a real pain in the ass and there's like i don't know 20 damn stickers on this bike so yeah it uh it sucks and i uh i wish they would have done it uh different with different kind of glue or who knows what 
and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's about it. Uh, one other uh, kind of a gripe I have about it is, um, you know, this bike is a very expensive bike, and there's other motorcycles half this cost or less that has adjustable um, clutch lever. This one doesn't have an adjustable clutch lever. I don't know why Aprilia doesn't give you one. Uh, I've seen, like I said, many bikes at this price, or maybe even less, that have adjustable clutch levers. And this one is like way out there. I mean, it's a reach, uh, even for me. But if you have smaller hands, like it's gonna be, it's gonna be hard to grab it. Of course, you don't use it uh, very much because you have a quick shifter. So the only uh, other um, issue, and it's not really good or bad. It's just it is what it is. Uh, that I've discovered on the Aprilia is that uh, using the quick shifter, if you're not above, I don't know, maybe about 5,000 RPM, it's very, very clunky. It's not smooth, and you have to be on the gas uh, going up. Uh, you have to be on the gas, and so not just a little bit, but on it. So if you're just driving around town, um, you saw me use it there. Um, I mean, use the clutch there, but the reason I'm saying that is because if you're not above 5,000 and you're not laying into the gas, uh, it's very, very clunky. So, uh, same thing with coming, going down. You have to be higher up in the RPM. If you're not higher up in the RPM, it doesn't like it as much. It's very clunky and it, it jerks and, uh, you know, it's just not very smooth at all. So, a lot of times at low speed, I just like to use the clutch. It still works. It's just not smooth. But once you're on it and you're on the gas, uh, it, it's it's butter smooth. I love it. Uh, don't, you don't have any issues with it. I've never had a problem with it. So um, not good or bad. It just it is a, it is what it is. I wish it was smoother. I guess. But again, this bike is intended to be you know revved like hell. It's a race bike. This isn't the main intention of it. So I guess if you're on the racetrack, I don't think you'll have an issue out of it. I think you'll never notice it. But uh, driving along the streets. Uh, it's just something I'd noticed. Uh, again, not good, not bad. It just, it is what it is. Other than that, uh, I love the bike. It's amazing. It puts a smile on my face every single time I ride it. And I wouldn't change it for nothing. Uh, this has probably been one of the best, one of my favorite bikes I've ever owned. And uh, it, it definitely puts many, many smiles on your face. It's fun to ride. And... Um, I love it. So if you want to get one, I highly recommend you do. I've had somebody mention in the comments that uh, uh, based on my 1,000 mile review, I think it was a 1,000 mile review I did on this bike, uh, after watching that video, he uh, doesn't want to get it. I guess maybe I, I made it sound too bad. Uh, it really is not that bad. Uh, there's nothing, nothing big. It's just quirks and issues. Every bike has quirks, uh, just, you know, different quirks and different kind of issues, but no bike is perfect, uh, you know. Maybe maybe for you, there's a bike out there that's absolutely perfect. I doubt it, but, you know, there's always going to be something that you would like to see different or whatever. But <clears throat> anyway, make a long story short, get the bike. If you, if you want to get an Aprilia RSV4, I highly recommend it. It's a great bike, but just keep in mind that it has an intended purpose. And that is not to drive from this stoplight to that one, even though that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> uh, that's not very fun. But when you're out on the on the twisty roads and uh, you know, or putting it up on the interstate ramp, uh, it'll put many many smiles on your face. It's a great bike. And um, like I said uh, in the video earlier, uh, coming up in May, I'm going to be doing something crazy with this bike, and uh, you, you're going to think I'm nuts. Uh, oh, here comes the rain. Lovely. And I still got like six miles to go. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera off. But hey, thanks for watching. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. Help me out with the, my channel. And uh, keep watching. There's uh, more videos to come. And uh, thank you so much. Catch you on the next video.